Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be building out this movie slider UI. So I'm just going to give you a quick demo of how it works. So you just slide over the background color changes and the content changes. So we're just going to be doing this with vanilla JavaScript and a little bit of SCSS and HTML, of course. So yeah, let's just jump straight into the video. Okay, so I've initiated a blank index.html file. I've also created a styles.scss file. Within this file, I've just declared a font and I've defined the body with that font. I've also done box sizing, border box and all elements. And I've included a mix in. We'll go into this a bit later. Um, it's actually to animate a gradient, but we don't need to do that yet. I'm just gonna start building out the markup and I just wanna split the page into two sections. I'm going to do upper and I'm going to do lower and the upper is going to have a header in it and the header is going to have a span which says pick a movie and then beneath this header we're just going to have a movies div and then within here we're going to have a few movies so we're going to call it dot movie and we're going to give it a data attribute of spider-man And let's just have had let's just add a blank image in here. Do another one for Batman and then another one for Hulk. And I've actually taken some images from the internet earlier to save some time. So I'll just import them now. Okay, cool. So I'm just gonna save that. The doc document obviously looks a bit broken. So what I'm going to do is go in here, do dot upper, give it a height of 70 VH. So it's going to be 70% of the view, the viewport. And we're going to do dot lower height 30 VH. And we're going to target the movies div. We're going to do display flex. And let me just do dot movie. Do width of 300 pixels. We'll do height of maybe 350 pixels. And uh, let's just do image width 100%, height 100%, and object fit cover. Okay, so I don't think the width is actually working there. Let's try 500. Okay, what we need to do is actually flex shrink zero. And then let's just do border radius, 30 pixels, and um, we can do overflow hidden, so it just ho hides the um, excess. Okay, so that's the whole div is um, scrolling across at the moment. Let's just go back here. What we're going to do is on dot upper, let's just do overflow hidden and then on dot movies let's just do overflow x scroll so that'll allow us to scroll um, right and left so maybe on the body as you can see we've got some padding here we just want to do padding zero to get rid of that so maybe it's margin zero okay so margin zero to remove that and let's just do dot header, give it some padding of 15 pixels. Let's do text align center. And now that we've got that working, we can actually do on the items itself. I think we can do, because when we scroll at the moment, we've got this sort of, it could scroll to half, but we actually want it to always scroll. So this section is over here. What we need to do is scroll, snap type. We need to do X axis and mandatory. And then on the movie element, we need to do, um, I can't remember what it is, scroll, scroll, snap a line, yeah. And let's just do, do we do start or do we do center? Okay, so I'll always scroll it over to the right now. Uh, let's just give this some margin. Uh, 
and I, can, I think we can add some padding by doing scroll padding. Okay. Okay, so that's looking good. But I don't like this scroll bar we've got at the bottom. So I know for Chrome we can do amber sand and then two colons and let's just do WebKit. So scroll bar display none. And I just want to target the body class and do a background um, black. And let's just compensate for this by doing color white on the text. So that gives us our like sort of sliding UI. I think it looks quite good. And now we just want to do the lower section. So this is going to have the content of each individual movie. So I just want to do content. Um, let's just do content container. And let's just do dot content. And let's just give these an ID correlating to the divs above. So I'm going to do div ID Spider-Man. Within here, let's just do a H3 Spider-Man. And I'm just going to do some Laura Mipson. Oops. It changes to HTML. Okay, let's just remove some of this sentence. Okay, so now that that's done, let's just duplicate it for the other movies. We'll do Batman. Hulk. And it's important that these IDs correlate to the data movie because this is what we will be ta targeting with the JavaScript later on. And Hulk. And we just want to target this content container and give it a background white. Give it a border left top or border top left radius of 30 pixels or maybe a little bit less. Not 30 will do. And do top right. And we also want to target these content divs. Let's just do. I think we can do position absolute on them. Give this a height of 100%. Yeah, so it's the height of 30VH. Give this a padding of 15 pixels. Um, let's target the H we did in here. That was a H3. Margin top not. Now maybe we can keep the margin top. Yeah, we'll just ignore that for now. And as you notice, you can see all the divs are on top of each other. So let's just do opacity not. Now I tell you what, let's leave that for now. Let's add buttons in. So if I do button view movie. So we got a button at the bottom. Let's target this button. Do background black color white width 100% and let's just do uh, padding 15 pixels not border none border radius 30 pixels and what we want to do is we want to do opacity not by default pointer events none so this means if they're overlaid by each other you're not going to be able to click one of the divs because sometimes a pass well opacity zero means that although you can't see it you can still interact with the element and we want to do an ambassad dot visible and we want to do opacity one pointer events visible and then let's go back to the HTML and for Spider-Man, let's add the class visible. So we should now just be able to see visible, um, visible the Spider-Man. There's a tongue twister. 
So on the P, let's just do font weight 300. And maybe H3 margin bottom five pixels or well, margin pixel margin bottom not. So I do line height 0.6. And now maybe we could do some more sort this padding out here. Um, on movies, let's just do justify content center. No, align items center. Nope. Let's see. So if we do width, no, height 100%. Okay, um, just do width, let's just do height 100%, do padding bottom, 15 pixels, hopefully this sorts that out, okay, so, okay, that looks a little bit better, and, yeah, so now we can actually move on to the JavaScript, because this UI looks looks good enough so if we just go over to the scripts.js file I want to target the um, outer movies div because the outer movies div is where we're gonna put the scroll event listener so if you remember on the HTML markup we have okay we've got a class stop movies so let's actually add an ID movies just for ease of access in it it's so gonna do movies div I'm going to do document dot get element by ID, pass it through the movies. And then I want to define each of the individual movies. So let's just do movies equals. Um, or we can do movies div dot um, query selector all. And we want to do dot movie. So we now get a collection of all of the movies. We want to do the event listener to listen out for the scroll. So we'll just do add event listener to scroll. I'm just going to do an arrow function. And within this arrow function, we basically want to check what position this is on the on the on the page. So we can actually use a JavaScript function called get bounding client rect, and that allows us to see the position if it's left or right. Um, I'll show what I mean now. So let me just console log. If I console log here and I scroll left and right, you'll see that this is going off, which is great. So every single time we scroll right or left, we want to check what element is on the screen. So what we want to do is we want to loop through each of the movies by doing a for loop. We'll do const movie of movies so this movie now will be the individual movie item or the movie and um, div and we want to check so we want to do an if statement if movie dot get bounding client rect dot left so it's going to return the left position is less than the width of the document so we can do uh, we can do window dot in the width And if movie dot get plo uh, get client rect left is greater than zero, so it's not like like if it's just over this side a bit more and it's not on the left, we can add a class to this movie. So we'll do a movie dot class list dot add visible. And let's just go back to the document. So you can see that it's adding the visible class, but then it's not removing it if it's off the screen. So we can do else movie class list dot remove visible. A 
Okay, so the issue here is we've got a little bit of the padding and the margin, so this is actually showing a little bit. So all we can actually do is do, I think we can do times 0.75, and hopefully that'll counteract this section here. Okay, that's great. And now that we've got that, we just want to target this element down here that has the same correlating ID. And I'm just going to build an additional function to do this. I want to do, I want to handle the content change. So let's just do handle content change. We're passing it through an ID. And this ID, let's just make sure it comes through. If no ID, return. So let's just pass this function here. Let's pass it through the ID. So if we look at the markup, we want to remove the visible class from any um, current div that has it on. And to do that, we just need to do const content divs equals document dot get element by ID. Actually, we can define this outside, so it saves us redefining it each time the function runs. We can do content, and well, actually, we need to do query select all dot content. And the same as we did the for loop earlier, we can do for const content div in of content divs. And we can do content div, oops, dot class list, dot remove. Um, we can actually do remove visible. Okay, so I'm just going to say something now. This is not the most optimized way of doing things. Um, like this function is going to trigger multiple times when it doesn't need to, but. I'm not going to get down into the nitty gritty things of optimization of this um, tutorial. We just want to get out the cool looking UI. So we want to remove visible class off all elements that has it. And we want to add it to the element that has the ID. So let's just do const and we can do, no, we don't even need to do that. We can just do document get element by ID, pass it through the ID, do class list, and that do add visible. Okay, that doesn't seem to be working yet. Um, document doc element, element by ID. The ID should be being passed through. Ah, no, we're not passing through the ID. We need to do movie dot data, I think it's a data source, a data set, dot movie, because it gets the data and we want to return the data prop, um, data attribute with movie on it by doing dot movie. We want to pass that through as an ID and then we want to set that element to have the visible class. So that looks nice and it's working correctly. We can actually go back to the um, content div and let's just do um, opacity, um, not opacity, transition opacity 0.2 seconds ease in out. Okay, I'm not sure why that isn't working. Transition. Ah, because I need to add an S now. Okay, so it's now a little bit smoother. And the final thing we could do to make it look even nicer, we could actually add a background 
to the actual body according to the colour of um, whatever movie is showing. To do that, we just want to do similar to what we did earlier, but we want to add a attribute to the body. And I want to do data movie selected equals, we started off with Spider-Man because we know that's the default um, state. And I'm going to just do ampersand, and then I'm going to do data dot movie selected equals Spider-Man. And this is where our function comes in handy. So let's just do at include gradient animation and let's pass it through two colors. So I'm just going to take a color from the document. I'm just going to do the selector tool. Click here, scrub any red. I'm going to pass that through as the first parameter. I'm going to pass the second through as black. And I'm going to give it a speed or a transition time of 0.2 seconds as well. Okay, maybe that's a little bit too bright. And then I want to do the same for the Dark Knight or the Batman. So do Batman. And we can give this maybe a little bit of a nice orange colour. And for the last one is a Hulk, so we'll have to do a green colour. Okay, cool. And now we want to do similar to what we did earlier, but we want to do document.body dot data set dot movie what do I do movie name or movie selected and we want to set it as the ID and that is not working Okay, so it's because of the capital letter. Okay, so I've messed up the styling somewhere. Let's change this back to the S. Um, let's have a look. Data movie selected Batman. Okay, of course, I'm going to do Hulk. So, yeah, so there we go. I think it looks um, quite clean. Obviously, you could could improve it by bringing this um, font up a size and adding some additional things in. But I just did wanted to do this video to illustrate what you can do with just vanilla JavaScript. A little bit of SCSS and just a bit of um, creative thinking. So if you enjoyed the video, please hit the thumbs up and hit the subscribe button for more content like this soon.